Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel if you are new. Hello, my name is V. I post nail tutorials every Thursday and Sunday at 15 a.m. Central Time. Getting right into today's video, I am starting off by removing my beautiful client's nails. We are actually going to be doing a fill on her nails as well. If you watched my last Watch Me Work video, I did the exact same thing. All we were doing was a fill and changing the design. I absolutely love doing fills on clients and just changing out the design. It makes it such an easier process in my opinion, instead of having to do a backfill and have to deal with all that stuff. So I'm going in with my rechargeable e-file from Kiara Sky. I have her at about nine to 10,000 RPMs. I am also using the Kiara Sky 5-in-1 bit in the color rose gold. They have tons of different colors available on their site as well. This one is medium grit. It is my favorite for finished filing and removing gel polish or designs. So I'm just going ahead and gently removing that. I'm not using tons of pressure as all I want to do is remove that top coat and that layer of nail art. Very, very, very light pressure. You want to make sure you guys really focus on that so that you don't have to build up the acrylic super thick if you accidentally remove some acrylic. So I'm just going in. I am focusing around that cuticle area and then I gently file away the design. At this point is the point where you will want to remove any lifting that they might have. I at least focus on thinning it out and then I go ahead and remove it in full whenever I am prepping the natural nail. So always make sure when you're doing your fills, you guys are focusing on that area and of course removing the design. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish that on the rest of the nails. Remember, nine to 10,000 RPMs on the e-file and very, very light pressure with your hand. Once I'm done removing the design, I am going in with my mandrel bit and a sanding band. These are from Profiles Backstage. This one is the medium grit as well. I prefer that in most of my bits, if you have not noticed. These are very, very fine, which makes for little to no damage on the natural nail if you are using it correctly. So I am now using my e-file at a speed of 4,000 RPMs. That is my comfortable speed for any of my prep work. I feel like if you go beyond that, there can be more damage done if you're not super careful. So I prefer to just leave it on a lower speed. My personal preference, I feel like that is the good speed to work with. So I'm going around the natural nail gently removing any shine and then like i said at this point is when i would be removing any lifting if she had any she does have very minimal lifting i believe she's had these nails on for three weeks i feel like that's the time frame that we normally book her appointments for and her nails hold on very well other than sometimes she does break the tips off or she cracks them from them just being really long and she's definitely not the most carefulest client ever. <laughs> if she's watching this, she's probably going to be agreeing with me. So I'm just going in and repeating that on the rest of the nails and then we're gonna move on to our next step of prepping.
Once I'm done removing the shine, I am going in with my needle bit. This one is from Amazon. You can find it in my Amazon storefront. I still have my e-file at a 4,000 RPM rate, and I am going gently around that cuticle area, trying to remove any dead skin that I might have missed with my mandrel bit. I feel like a lot of the time, nail techs overlook this, and honestly, this has helped tremendously with lifting. I've mentioned it a ton before in my videos. If you have trouble lifting, try implementing these first other more in-depth kind of steps to prevent it. Now I'm going in with my cuticle ball bit. This is going to gently buff off the cuticle from her cuticle. <laughs> the dead cuticle off of her cuticle. I feel like I prefer this method a hundred times more than nipping it off. A lot of people think it's not okay to cut off the cuticle. I feel feel like it just terrifies me and even if it's not okay or if it is okay i'm going to stick to this method because it's just safer in my opinion so i'm going in and just gently removing it i have now moved my e-file to a speed of 5,000 rpms i have found that that helps remove more of that stubborn dead skin around that area now i am going in with my tammy taylor peel and stick file and i'm going to be pre-shaping these nails before i do my fill the reason why i'm doing this is because her nails are really worn down and with stiletto specifically they do tend to round out a little bit more than any other shape in my opinion so i want to make sure that i'm getting her shape super super crisp super pointy since the beginning and then i go in and file a second time once I'm done. So I'm just going ahead and doing that on this hand and then we're gonna be moving on to the other hand as I did not remove the cuticle on the other hand, so I'm going back to that. I have mentioned this in my recent videos, how my brain during right now, pregnancy has not been working as it normally works. So I'm all over the place. If you guys notice that in my videos, I'm so sorry. I still get all the steps done. <laughs> They're just in out of order like the entire time. So I do apologize for that. But I do have in-depth videos on exactly how I do them in my previous videos. If you guys are curious, make sure to check out my playlist. They're super in-depth. I have them all organized from seasons, holidays, beginner nail techs, intermediate, like crazy nail art, summer nail art, like everything It's super organized. So make sure you guys check out my playlist. I have tons and tons of videos already accumulated since I started doing YouTube. So make sure you guys check those out. I'm gonna go ahead and finish filing these nails and then we're gonna move on to our other hand. It's too late now to turn around and back again I made my bed and now I lay my head in it And I'm sorry I'm not perfect but I knew that I wouldn't be I guess it's for the best you know the worst I'm sorry, my actions, they haunt me and I'll never let it down. I'm no good at being good, but I never 
voice so I can listen back again And I'm sorry I'm not perfect but I knew that I wouldn't be I guess it's for the best, you know the worst to me Once we're done with all of the filing, I am going in with a lint-free wipe and some swipe, and I'm going to be really cleaning the surface of the nail along with the natural nail, specifically focusing on the natural nail area as this works as a dehydrator, and I wanna make sure that I remove any oils from her nail bed so that the acrylic adheres properly. I'm going in with Triple X Bond from Not Polish. This is their primer, and I'm going to be doing two coats of this on each hand. I have been mainly doing two coats on all my clients just to be safe. It minimalizes any lifting issues. So if you guys are having issues with the lifting, make sure you add a second coat on there and that normally does the trick. I have found that proper prep and implementing two coats of primer definitely do the trick for me. So make sure you guys try that out if you are struggling. As mentioned in the original video where I did her full set, this lovely beautiful glitter is discontinued so unfortunately I cannot link it down below. If you guys find a dupe for it, definitely comment in the comment section. Give me a heads up because this is like my prized possession and I don't ever really use it unless my clients know of it. So I'm going ahead and doing the fill and encapsulation all at once, filling exactly what she had on her nails. And right after I'm done filling the nail, I go in and add that extra thickness and the encapsulation with my clear acrylic from Not Polish. So I'm just going ahead and finishing that. Very, very simple process. I talk about it all the time when working with the cuticle area. You wanna make sure you are using a medium-sized bead of acrylic. I feel like that helps me blend everything out nicely. And you wanna hold the finger in a downward position. Very, very important so that the product does not flow into the cuticle area, rather the tip, which is exactly what you want. You don't want it to overflow because even though you think you might clean up very well, some product might be left behind, which ultimately causes lifting. So make sure you guys are really focusing on that application and you should be good to go. Now while I'm doing a fill as well, once I am adding the clear acrylic, I wanna make sure that I am thickening up any areas that might need a little bit more thickness. Because her nails are super, super long, I definitely pay attention to that very, very well. I don't want her to crack any nails. As long as you're paying attention to that apex area, you should be good to go.
Once I'm done doing the fill and everything is nice and dry, I am going back in with my rechargeable e-file from Kiara Sky. I have her at 8,000 RPMs. Again, using my five in one bit, the rose gold one in medium grit. I am just gently filing the surface of the nail, making sure everything is nice and flush. I do try to blend everything very well, but sometimes it can be a little bit bulky in certain areas. So you still wanna make sure you are filing it very well. Focus on the cuticle area. Make sure that the acrylic is nice and flush to the natural nail. This also helps minimize lifting issues. So if you guys are struggling, make sure you get your prep down good and your cuticle application very well. If you do them too thick in the cuticle area, that can cause snagging, which ultimately leads to lifting. And like I preach, you want to avoid that at all costs. So I'm going ahead and finishing that, and then we'll be moving on to our next step. I'm going ahead and doing my final file with my hand file. This is the Tammy Taylor peel and stick file, the one I use in all of my videos basically, other than two. <laughs> and you guys probably know which ones I'm talking about. But I'm just going ahead and making sure that everything is super flush on the sides, making sure that that shape is super, super crisp. And then we're gonna be moving on to our nail art.
Don't forget to buff the nails. Specifically when you are doing nail art, you wanna make sure you are really buffing that surface. I'm going in with a lint-free wipe and some swipe and just cleaning off that excess dust and prep for our nail art. You want a super smooth and super clean surface to work on. So for these nails, she did show me some inspo and it was basically lemons and limes. So she wanted me to use a mixture of different bright colors. So that's basically what I'm doing for her for this set. We are starting off with this green. This green is not available on Poochie's Nails website any longer, which I am very upset about, but I will be trying to find a similar one on Not Polish or Profiles Backstage site. So look for that product in the description box. I have been loving using gel polish for my nail art just because I have tons that aren't getting used and I feel like it's easier to just grab a gel polish instead of having to try to mix a gel paint. So keep that in mind. You can always use your gel polish as long as they are opaque enough, as long as they're thick enough to your liking, you can always use it for nail art. So I am going in with that green and then I'm going to be doing the white area with the frosting gel paint from Profiles Backstage. And then I'm just using that green once again and adding it to the outer areas, which would be the lime peel. So I'm just going in with my same nail art brush and just going in and adding those tiny details. So I know a lot of people a lot of the time ask me how I clean my nail art brush and it's super, super simple. I keep forgetting to add it into one of my videos, but I basically just grab a paper towel. It is dry, there's no product on it, just a paper towel and I fold it onto the brush and just wipe it. Nothing fancy, I feel like this has kept my bristles in place and perfect. Um, I don't like using product on it. Now, if I am using black and then I need to switch to white, absolutely use a little bit of swipe or some alcohol, very, very minimal. I don't drench it. I just barely dip it in there and try to get as much of the color off. If you do nail art like I do, you will notice that you don't necessarily have to clean it as good as you think you need to clean it. If you just lightly wipe off the color, go in with your next one, you should be good to go. So I'm doing pink now. This gel polish as well, I mixed a little bit with white. This is just gel polish with the white gel paint. And I'm just trying to get it a lighter shade so then I can use the raw pink gel polish as my pink for the peel, so if that makes any sense. I'm gonna be doing a lot of back and forth also from her left hand to her right hand to her right hand from her left hand because I stopped using my little light. I did notice that the battery was running low, which that affects ultimately the curing process with the light. So instead of risking it, I just went back to my old ways and I'm using the rechargeable LED light from Kiara Sky. I feel like that's kind of the longer process in my opinion, but I'm still getting it done. I just alternate from hand to hand. And then I'm trying to use the same color as I go so I don't have to do tons of cleaning, but I think I ended up just going all over the place anyways. So enough babbling. I'm going to go ahead and let you guys watch. I will be inserting the names if I have the colors of the gel polishes or gel paints as I go. So I'll get right back on whenever I feel it's necessary.
surrounded by the lights. We came to shine here. Watch it look daytime in the night. We bring the vibes here. We full of life, you keep the change, keep the change. They hate and say we went and changed. I stay the same. You must be blinded by the lights. You must be blinded by the lights. lights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Faith that who gon' hurt this? I naughty night you lullaby. I'm doing me is do or die. You must be blinded by the lights. We came to shine here. Watch it look daytime in the night. We bring the vibes here. We full of life. You keep the change, keep the change. They hate and say we went and change. I stay the same. You must be blinded by the lights.
Once I'm done with my nail art, I do go in and place the hand back into the light for a full minute. I want to make sure everything, all the layers are fully, fully cured. And then I'm going in with my top coat. So I did want to mention that the thumbs were left out because they were completely out of frame. So you will not be seeing that process. I just did big on one hand and 30 on the other. My client is having a birthday here soon. So these were her birthday nails. She had me do white gel paint with my neon pigments and nothing fancy. You'll be able to get a glimpse of what it looked like on one of the nails whenever I'm top coating it. So I do apologize for that, but it's nothing crazy. Just wrote the letters and the numbers and went in with my pigments and then I top coat, good to go. So I'm going in with my Glosset from Not Polished. This is my favorite glossy top coat. Definitely recommend it. Stays super, super shiny. Doesn't get scratched up easily. Doesn't wear off easily. And it lasts the entire time that the clients have their nails on. So definitely a must in my opinion. I am going ahead and curing that for two minutes to be safe. I try to go a little over what is actually needed just to make sure that everything is perfect and staying in place. That basically concludes today's video. Let me know what you guys think down below. Leave a comment down below for her telling her happy birthday. We appreciate her so, so much for allowing me to do all these videos. But I hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you guys next time. Make sure you add a second coat on there and that normally does the trick. I have found that prepper prop. Whoa. I have found that prepper. <laughs> I have found that proper prep and implementing two coats of primer and adding it to the outer areas, which would be the, the fuck is it called? The lime peel.